welcome to economics lovers today i will discuss decision making under uncertainty attitude towards x this is a very very important concept for ugc net point of view this is also cover syllabus of ug ug okay of various university so there are the contents of question there are the contents that will be covered in this session okay what do you mean by uncertainty and risks why uncertainty theory is needed measurement of risks st peter berg paradox von neumann morgenstern utility function attitude towards risks okay also their parts risks averse lovers and neutral measurement of risks aversion certainty equivalence risk premium and friedman savage and markovich theory now until now we have learned behavior of consumer or producer with certainty okay so in microeconomics theory that we have learned so far that is under uncertain under certainty situation okay but we here consider what will happen if we consider uncertain situation what will be uh, impact on outcome that will be consider here this is very very important for a consumer okay because a thing cannot be always with certainty it also involve certain amount of uncertainty so in this session we will discuss this kind of decision uncertainty measurement for example consumer must consider when buying a car that means let's suppose i am a consumer i am buying a car okay so when i am buying a car we have to consider what is the future price of petrol okay here what is the requirement cost of this bike okay we have to also consider okay when i demanding for the bike okay when we are buying a bike okay we have to must consider it because of this is the uncertain world okay so what will happen in future okay we cannot predict okay so you have to we cannot exactly predict okay we have to consider this okay principle the principle analytical approach to uncertainty is based on path tracking work of von neumann morgenstein okay so basically neumann and morgenstein did some important work on uncertainty okay what do you mean by uncertainty and risks okay in economics basically in microeconomics uncertainty and risks have some difference okay but in this scenario in this present lecture we will consider it interchangeably but we will see what is the slight difference between uncertainty and risks uncertainty is known risks while risks is measurable uncertainty what that mean uncertainty is unknown risks it cannot be uh, measurable it is basically unknown but risks is measurable we can measure it okay risks basically measurable where uncertainty is non measurable okay uncertainty means a situation where is more than one chance of possible outcome of a decision okay so uncertainty means basically more than one possible uh, chance of outcome okay we cannot say that that can be happen that can be happen whatever may be happen okay more than one chances 
but one more thing is that we cannot estimate okay by past information and by probability theory if we estimate by past information or by probability theory then it will be basically risks and risks means a situation that is basically uh, measured by probability okay or by past information but here under our certainty making analysis we will interchangeably use these terms okay so here we will not differentiate between these two terms we will interchangeably use these two terms but when we uh, distinguish between this we will get certain difference that's it but in uncertainty theory or this lecture we will use this interchangeably no difference now why uncertainty theory is needed this is the concept so we already discussed why we going to read uncertainty because classical and classical theory of behavior does not consider any kind of risks okay so classical and classical means uh, adam smith jevons marshall they are the classical okay so they did not consider about risks but von neumann and morgenstern studied under uncertainty okay they said what happen if we consider risks this will be incorporated in this lecture so if we consider this uncertainty what will be happen to the outcome this will be uh, main motive of the uh, this lecture and the, this is basically done by the newman and morgenstein and this risks and uncertainty can be presented in probability form when we saying Uh, this risks or uncertainty we will uh, we will present this uncertainty or risks by probability from okay what is the uncertainty this will be uh, presented by probability form now measurement of risks so what is risks that can be measurable okay that is quantitatively we have to arrange on possible outcome of a particular choice also the chance that each outcome will occur so we have to arrange them what is the possible outcome okay and what is the chances what is the probability of that particular outcome suppose you investment in a company if uh, gain your share value will be 100 dollar to 120 dollar if you lost okay or if loss occurred then your value decrease to 100 dollar to 80 dollar so here we presented the loss okay in term of quantity but this loss can be represented in probability form okay so here we considering that you have a minimum understanding of probability theory okay here we also discuss some um, basic probability that is suppose uh, the probability of company gain is uh, one for and uh, probability of loss is 3 by 4 if we sum these two we will get 1 okay so probability could be objective or subjective so what is the objective what is the subjective this is basically subjective probability based on personal judgment suppose i am saying today will be rain this is my personal judgment or experience okay not based on my frequency okay not based on probability okay this is the subjective but objective means this basically uh 
in uh, probability term okay no personal judgment okay so so objective probability can be represented like this total number of experiment that is m here and favorable uh, favorable events that is small m okay and x is the outcome this is the objective probability next thing expected value okay so expected value we already read in statistics expectation okay also read in econometrics expectation what is expectation expectation is nothing but average okay if we have two situation okay so what will be its average what will it mean nothing but it it is the expected value a person can face situation where number of outcome occur okay each of these have certain fear okay if lose if gain obviously certain fear monetary gain or loss okay if probability of certain outcome is known we can found we can find out expected monetary value okay this monetary value is weighted average of all possible outcome with probability as weighted to outcome okay so what saying here expected value is nothing but it is represented by x okay probability okay into first outcome plus probability with second outcome here probability is the nothing but weight of this outcome here is the weight to the this outcome okay so here first outcome is 120 this is gain multiplied by its weight this is probability on 4 plus it is a lose multiplied by its weight 3 by 4 if we sum up all these things what will we get 90 this is the expected value okay so expected value is nothing but outcome multiplied by respective probability value then what we will get it is the expected value one more thing is variability so when we considering measurement of risks we have to consider two things one is the expected value what is the and number one number two is the variability okay so measurement of risks two important concept expected value and variability so in this session we will consider uh, expected value and variability okay which will be taken okay we will discuss here what is the variability with expected value variability of outcome important factor determine how much degree of uncertainty is involved of action greater variability of fear from expected value then greater risk is involved so let's suppose consider in statistics okay in statistics you we did some uh, numerical solve which is consistency okay if sort of consistency so, so in cons consistency this will be matter or not how much they run this is not matter the matter is that how they are consistent the concept so variability of outcome is the important factor determine how much of variability of uncertainty is involved okay you get a variability of payoff from the expected value get a risk risk involved so get a variability for payoff that's means expected value so there is the get a risk involved so it will be clear if we consider this example so expected value here project one project two expected value probability times this expected value probability times this expected value this is 90 okay this is the losing this is the uh, gaining with the probability 3 by 4 with the probability 1 by 4 if we sum up this probability term we will get 1 so because of probability is equal to 1 okay 
superiors probability of project 1 okay probability 1 multiplied with outcome 1 minus mean value probability 2 outcome 2 minus mean value square okay this is the standard definition okay if we root all these things what we will get we will standard deviation if you root then we will get 17.32 similarly for project 2 expected value 120 okay here is the 140 and 60 okay two cases with probability 3 by 4 1 by 4 and x1 x2 are the payoff okay these are the payoff okay variance equal to probability 1 x1 okay this minus mean value whole square plus probability 2 outcome x2 here with minus expectation of x okay or mean value whole square what you will get by standard deviation by root root we will get 36.44 so here second project expected value is greater than first project obviously 120 is greater than 90 but variability is high in second project obviously first project variability is 17.32 and second project variability is 36.44 okay so in that situation which will be taken which project will be taken by an investor that will depend on preference towards a person if a person is risk lover okay then he will obviously choose obviously choose second project okay here is the excess value is greater risk is also greater so this will be taken by risk lover person if a person is risk averse then obviously choose first project because of low risk and low return this is the all about measurement of risks okay so we can measure by expected value as well as variability that is standard deviation if individual is leak lover obviously choose this 120 expected value with greater variability if person is leak avoider obviously choose this 90 with 17.32 standard deviation variability okay now send peter work paradox okay this is basically published in 1738 okay this try to solve the paradox why most people are willing to participate in fair bid in a gamble where 50 50 chance odds of winning or losing this paradox st peter Cross paradox it is basically tells about people are unwilling to participate in fair bid okay this st peter's box paradox given in 1738 okay this sense peter's name because of it maybe i am not sure because of it's published in saint peter's journal or this case study is based on peter's area of russia for this reason it can be saint peter's paradox okay basically this uh, illustration is based on uh, Peter Vox, uh, based on Peter Vox, this is uh, situated in Russia. Okay, 
a gamble in which expected value is zero more precisely the gamble in which fee of fee of uh, right to pay is equal to expected value okay so what is the fee of the play of the game equal to its expected value expected value is nothing but average value of two outcome with respective probability okay in that uncertain situation most individual will not make fair bid okay according to bangalore a rational individual will take decision under this situation on the basis of expected utility rather than expected utility value okay according to bangalore they said that under this situation people will uh, based basically on expected monetary value rather than uh, expected utility value rather than expected monetary now also assume that margin due to money to individual declines as more 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 of it okay and the individual bids on the basis of expected utility from extra money if he wins the game and margin due to money to him declines as he extra money okay most individual will not play the game reason behind diminishing margin utility so what's happening here just go through diagram this is the present situation this is 20000 if he gain monetary value increase to the 21000 but he will lose in marginal utility okay but if he if he in present situation that is 20000 his utility is greater this is the thing is explained here okay suppose individual has 20 with him and get a bid to equal to 50 chance winning or losing okay if he wins the bid will be raised to the here but expected utility of money declines obviously here declines just draw straight line so expected major utility of extra 1000 to him which is depicted by the rectangle okay that is c d e f c d e f c d e f or c d f e okay which is less than extra margin utility of the previous situation that is with 20000 okay with 20000 that is ab dc okay it may be the case a rational individual will be unwilling to bid even at favorable odds if his margin utility of money declines very rapidly okay so it may be the case to unwilling to participate in bid okay because of margin utility of money decreases rapidly for example if a person get a bid if he wins she will get this amount 1000 if he lose he have to pay 1000 then in case rapid decline in marginal utility of money may be i will need to agree to make the bid okay let's suppose consider with bid this mon- monetary value is increases but utility is decreases okay but with 20000 at present okay this is utility is here okay so what is that area if he loses the bid his income falls to the uh, uh 90 thousand and result and as a result loss of total utility equal to blue settled area so what we are saying if he lose this income will be reduced to 90 thousand but utility is increases okay from this situation to this situation or this situation to this situation okay 
so this is blue certain area indicating the gain in marginal utility it indicates that smaller loss in monetary value smaller loss in monetary value here okay the loss in terms of total utility is greater than but loss in terms of total utility is greater than gain in terms of total utility okay so gains in terms of total utility is greater in terms of lose in terms of uh, total utility okay here it is the greater here this and here this it is greater limitation of Bernoulli expected utility theory it assume cardinality measurable utility which is unreliable okay always utility is not cardinally measurable okay favorable or does not favor to participate the meet okay we will later see that favorable or participate to uh, participate to a beat okay for a rational individual but here does not participate it's applicable in certain case not white area because of this is based on Peterberg area okay this is not white applicability in other area okay next thing is the von Neumann Morgenstern utility index under risk situation this hypothesis states that a rational individual will not will go to uh, by the expected utilities rather than expected monetary values okay so according to von Neumann Morgenstern they will emphasize more on expected utilities rather than expected monetary values in short it is called nm index okay they are at the axiom or assumption of the Neumann index if we have two letters this is the axiom of complete ordering two letters either there should be relationship of consumer preference indifference between them if can be it can be a greater than b or b greater than a or a indifference to b okay, this is a complete ordering transitivity if this is the common of the indifference curve okay i also uh, explain it shortly okay if a is greater than b b is greater than c then consumer must prefer a greater than c this is the tangibility of the property and continuity suppose there are two lotteries l and f with probability 0 and 1 okay that is alpha l into 1 minus alpha l is greater than l prime there should not be a certain reversal okay example of event food trip is strictly preferred than staying at home so let's suppose consider there are two lotteries okay l l prime okay l consists of some uh, probability with two situation and l prime will consist of some probability with two situation L prime is said that if we staying at home with certain probability that is 1 we will get 10 utility but L is said that we will get 90 utility okay 90 utility but there is 1% of uh, getting debt okay so so there is utility is greater so obviously this will be preferred also there involved a a thinny uh, rigs but also it is also preferred with uh, tiny rigs okay so eventful tip is strictly preferred okay there is also at a some rigs but also it is also preferred because of there is utility is greater than staying at home okay so so there is no certain reversal so here is no uncertain with l prime so this will not be preferred more than this okay 
obviously this will be preferred than this l prime l is preferred over l, uh, l prime okay there is no reversal okay okay a l prime is not greater preferred okay this is the continuity assumption there is a no reversal okay i think it is clear to you reflexivity a good is indifference between two events having same outcome okay we have the two situation two letters okay l1 and l2 this will be the two situation this will be indifferent because of two good events this is the reflexivity assumption and axiom of independence suppose there are two letters l1 and l2 consist of two situation a b there is a cb if a is preferred to c a is preferred to c a is preferred to c okay that is p1 that is l1 so it may not matter what is the b okay so there then l1 is preferred to l2 this is the axiom of independence axiom of unequal probabilities in the above example p1 greater than p2 here p1 is greater okay then l1 will be preferred to l2 okay so probability is the matter in uncertainty situation if probability is greater then this situation will be uh, taken this risk situation will be taken okay <laughs> next thing is the axiom of the compound lotteries compound lotteries nothing but a lottery can be also be combination of two lotteries okay this is nothing but lottery of lottery suppose you have a share of a company okay this company shares as a dividend you will get uh, again a share okay so this is the uh, this is the lottery of lottery okay so share is to you a lottery because of this is uncertain what you will get okay but as a as a as a dividend you will get a lottery that is again a share okay so this is the compound lottery concept okay lottery of lottery is nothing but compound lottery okay there is the some chances okay with this lottery that will get as dividend this is about axiom of uh, compound lottery and axiom of monotonicity it implies that more is preferred than less monotonicity says that more is preferred expected utility of lottery expected utility of lottery can be calculated using the weighted sum of the utility associated with the outcome with probability of acting as weight so here i already said that probability here acting as the weight so utility of lottery l Depends upon probability 1 minus p1 and p1. Here is the utility of A and utility of B. So, the so difference between expected value and expected utility here is that expected value is the average payoff. Okay, here. But expected utility is the what is the utility of this 5000 what is the utility of 100 okay this is the difference between expected value and expect expected utility says first what is the utility of this 5000 what is the expected utility of this 100 okay this is the difference between expected utility and expected value expected utility lottery is the expected utility of monetary value that we have done earlier okay that we have done earlier okay suppose you bought a lottery with 70 percent of chances winning uh, 5000 and lose with 30 percent okay here is the this so if we multiply it with probability terms that we will get 380 this is the expected value but if we take it utility terms what will get probability into 5000 here we consider that 100 
monetary value equal to one utils. So obviously five thousand means five utils that we multiplied here plus point thirty. This is point three. This is the uh, probability of uh, get one hundred. Okay, into one that will average utility expected utility which is three point eight. One more thing it is that this is not uh, from net set point of view not important but I will say here to present uh, expected utility some people use LNW okay some people some people use ln w okay this is not our concern but to make it more clear i will giving here this can be uh, utility for okay so here just substitute ln uh, 5 thousand okay some people uh, can be somewhere it can be written okay like square root of w okay or utility times half okay and somewhere this square this is basically utility of the x savers this is same as x savers this is also a utility function this is also basically your utility of x lower person okay so here we here here we not incorporate these terms okay for simplicity we just considered here this if we uh, consider in this way okay you will get difference value but like same that we calculated here okay this is Attitude towards risks. Some universe seeks to minimize risks and called risk lovers. Some individual prefer risks is called risk lovers. Some individual is indifferent between risks. It is called risk neutral. Okay. So here we will discuss attitude towards risks of a person. But it is important to note that this difference preference towards risks depends on whether for an individual margin utility of money diminishes. Or increases or remains constant as uh, income increases. Okay. So here I have not uh, discussed uh, utility function of uh, risk neutral person. This can be represented as one W to the power one. This is basically risk neutral person utility. So if we take the derivative this will get sub constant term okay so where is the square term of utility of risk lover person okay if we take the derivative 2w okay but if we take the derivative of this okay so this will be negative okay half times w into uh, half minus one okay this becomes negative okay so why is why we represent by this way because of 
as wealth increases okay this is the differentiation with respect to wealth okay so as wealth increases what will happen to the marginal utility okay so for risk averse person that is this this becomes negative for this reason uh, slope or concave okay that we will discuss in next slide for risk lover person this becomes 2w okay if we take the uh, power derivative just power derivative okay power rule of derivative okay just take the uh, uh, power rule of derivative just take the power rule of derivative we will get 2w this is the as wealth increases as wealth increases person preference towards uh, or uh, risk is increases that is their marginal utility increases for risk lovers person okay this is the difference for this reason their curve is convex okay and if we take uh, w to the power 1 derivative then we will get simply a constant term for this reason this uh, person utility is utility curve is just a 45 degree line that's it trick savater a person is a risk saver who prefers a certain outcome with same expected than uncertain outcome. So, risk saver is a person who is prefer certain outcome than uncertain outcome with same expected utility or same expected uh, value. So, when income 10, yeah, just consider utility is 45 when income 20 utility is 65 when income is 30 utility is 75 that are represented here if we consider the marginal utility here is a 20 here is a 10 so here is the decreases in marginal utility why as income increases as income increases utility is decreases that we discussed by derivative terms okay this is happening for the x average person just consider this just consider this amount change okay in x but there is a small amount changing y okay so here income changes very much but utility changes in less so this is basically the uh, fall in marginal utility okay so risk saver person always marginal utility fall suppose the individual is currently employed a fixed amount of salary basis that is 50,000 okay this is 50,000 if he choose a new job his income will be goes to goes to rise 30,000 with utility 75 but if successful if he does not successful his income is reduced to 10,000 with utility 45 what will be the expected utility here just 0.5 into utility of 30 and 0.5 utility of 10,000 here utility of 10,045 and utility of 30 is 75 just multiply here with 0.5 what will you get 60 utils okay so present job with fixed salary with no uncertainty uncertainty is getting 55 okay here with 15,000 with certainty getting utility 55 but new job new job is giving 60 utils so obviously get our utils with uncertain situation so in that situation risk is greater in risk is of but a risk averse person will choose risk is of because of expected utility is greater okay so with certainty they getting expected utility 55 but with uncertainty they getting 
60. So obviously they will choose certain job, uncertain job because of expected utility is greater. Here already we mentioned that who prefer a certain outcome with the same expected utility than uncertain outcome. If outcome is greater in uncertain situation, then obviously it's preferred. Okay, payoff is greater in uncertain situation, then obviously preferred by risk savers individual. Okay, this is the risk savers person. For risk savers person, utility curve is uh, convex. For risk uh, averse person, concave. Okay, when income 10, utility is 20. Sorry, correct here 20. When income is uh, 20, utility is 43. And when income is 30, utility is 83. Okay, so this is the marginal utility 33. Okay, this is the marginal utility 40. Okay, okay, so here marginal utility is increasing okay here marginal utility is increasing okay so a risk lover person with same expected utility same expected utility it may be certain or uncertain uncertain they will favor this situation this is the behavior of leaks loving individual okay so just consider example with certainly 2000 20000 he getting 43 okay this is the certain income but if he successful in job uh, his salary will rise to the 30,000 with utility 83 and his fail utility is decreased to the uh, 20 and uh, money income is 10. Just put this, you will get 51.5 utils. So, obviously, this is greater 43 with certainty. Okay, so Rix Rafar person obviously choose uh, Rix job. Okay because of here is expected utility is greater and also that if same expected utility then risk lover person will choose risk situation not certain situation it is the behavior of risk lover person so patient job with fixed salary 20,000 with no uncertainty is 43 whereas the expected utility new job is 51.5 same thing is explained here risk new job a person is called risk neutral if he is indifferent between a certain given outcome and uncertain outcome with the same expected utility. Okay, here is the utility, marginal utility. Okay, just here, sorry, this will be 0, and here 40 and 40. So, just think that when income 10 his utility is 40 when income 20 his is 80 and when income uh, 30 his utility is 120 so here is the case that if he gets uh, with certain 80 20,000 he is getting 80 utility but if he gets the job if successful he is good uh, 30,000 if he is fail his income will reduce to 10,000 just probability terms 0.5 into 30,000 and 0.5 into 10,000 what will get 80 it is so this is the risk situation okay but this is with certain situation with 20 it is so in this case x neutral, neutral person is Different between this situation. So, expected utility of XC job is same as utility of present job with certain income. 
okay this is 20 shares means certain income with 80 utility here it is the uncertain income with 80 utilities so x neutral percent will be a different between these two jobs okay next so measurement of risk aversion okay this is basically two measurement of risk aversion that is given by arrow and part one is absolute uh, measure and number two is a relative measure it is not more important but i here incorporate it okay here, from here it may be asked a mcq question for this reason i put here the formula of absolute aversion double derivative of utility with respect to weld and first derivative with respect to weld okay just division to calculate risk aversion and uh, absolute risk aversion and relative risk aversion just take first derivative okay this are the first derivative uh, sorry second derivative and first derivative again this whole thing we have to take the first derivative okay if is greater first derivative then increasing the errors if is less than zero then decreasing risk lower and that is a risk lower and it is constant risk neutral for that mean if is greater okay that's mean risk aversion avoid is increasing okay as well increasing then uh, as well increasing then to put oil on risk asset is decreasing for this reason it is called increasing risk aversion okay and constant risk neutral okay as well increases proportion of holding risk asset also same okay this is the constant risk aversion if we multiply it with uh, absolute risk aversion with oil what we get is the absolute risk aversion it is the percentage measurement in his income okay this is basically percentage income measurement mm. just take first derivative okay with respect to oil here is a just multiplied with oil initial width okay this is, is the initial width okay so here is the initial width initial width uh, second derivative initial width first derivative okay just initial width multiplied with this with absolute uh, risk aversion what you will get relative risk aversion if this is a positive then increasing risk aversion that means as oil increases percentage uh, uh, as 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 income increases percentage of uh, put oil in risk asset is decreases for this reason increasing risk aversion risk aversion increasing okay risk aversion just thinks risk aversion that means avoid so here the risk aversion increases as oil increases risk aversion increases therefore it is the decreasing negative risk levels okay as well increases the uh, as income increases their putting in risk asset is decreases for this the negative risk levels and as well increases no change for this is a constant uh, risk neutral okay this is the all about things so just think that absolute risk aversion and relative risk aversion just with first der second derivative divided by first derivative what will get is the absolute x aversion if we multiply it with in initial yield then what will get is relative x aversion okay so if if as income increases wealth put on risk asset uh, decreases then we will call increasing risk aversion okay as And next thing is the certain equivalence. It is a certain amount of weight which involves no risk. Okay, so certain equivalence can be represented as ln natural natural logarithm. Certain equivalence equal to probability of ln l l one one minus p ln l two. Just is here nothing but just in weight times ln weight times ln. Okay, weighted by their respective probability. What you will get it is the certain equivalence. Okay, basically certain equivalence tells about the certain amount of income which involves no risk. This is the certain equivalence. Risk premium. Okay. So risk premium is the amount of money that a risk dealer individual will be willing to pay to avoid the risk. Okay. 
so risk premium is applicable to the risk our person all right by paying the risk premium individual can insure himself against the large loss okay so it is clear from the above why people buy insurance okay so why people buy insurance i will explain here suppose let's consider here suppose he has a house okay his yield income 30000 okay here we need to do 75 his house catches fire okay if it catches fire then his income reduced to 10,000 it will be 45 here again you considering that there is a 50 50 chances of catching fire okay chances of catching fire so what will be the expected value just multiplied with uh, probability of uh, catching fire probability of not catching fire with uh, expected value of income okay with not catching fire with catching fire income what you will get 20,000 so the, there there it is the uh, situation of two situation average income okay average income so average income we will do is 60 this is with uncertain situation okay uncertain situation average utility average expected utility is average or expected to both are same thing this is the expected utility okay 60 but here is the uncertain income but it, it is the utility curve with certainty with low level of income that is 16,000 they getting same level of utility so we have to pay this amount CD okay this is the risk premium okay if we pay the insurance company 4000 we will get certain income a certain utility 60,000 with low level of income okay here this is the risk premium where I discussed here you can read this uh, for better understanding okay next we will discuss Friedman Savage hypothesis so it is the improvement over the Bernoulli hypothesis that major utility of money decreases a rational individual will not take any kind of fair bid according to Bernoulli that key rational individual will not take any kind of fair bid but he said that yes rational individual will take fair bid with as well as insurance some people it involve both buying insurance and gambling okay insurance and as well as gambling that means avoid risk for buying insurance and gambling okay that is risk taker that is risk lover okay so they also try to both both avoid and choose risk so so here by insurance they try to avoid risk and and choosing risks answer has been provided by Friedman service okay so here is the utility curve first is concave again convex and again concave so it is basically a preference of individual first concave with low level of income again high level of income it is convex and again with high level of income it is concave okay this is explained here in the first rises at diminishing rate obviously it is rises at diminishing rate so margin utility of money declines okay after here it is declined and again it is increasing okay and increasing rate and finally margin utility of money decreases and finally margin utility of money decreases okay this is all about uh, Friedman service hypothesis okay so this paper is that means a individual preference uh, can be two types with various level of income one is uh, risk averse one is risk lover and again risk averse with high level of income that is here utility is decreasing here utility is increasing here utility is decreasing 
This is the basic concept. Markowitz theory. Professor Markowitz found that Friedman's Seven's hypothesis contrary to the common observation. According to him, it is correct to say that poor and rich are unwilling to gamble and take risks expect the favorable odds. They said that poor will uh, take uh, unwilling gamble, okay, and rich will uh, unwilling to gamble with favorable odds. It will care here when low income, this is poor, here again it is the high income, it is the rich. This is the same situation. They are not interested when marginal yield is falling. Here it is falling. This is explained here. Criticize. Okay. But according to him, it is not correct that both poor and rich are unwilling to come in. Rather, they both purchase lottery. Okay. According to Friedman's hypothesis, marginal yield of money depends on absolute level of income. Okay, so Friedman says, says that his utility is different upon absolute level of income. Okay, not present level of income. They explain here is the with certainty. Okay, if he takes Campbell, then what will happen? Yes, so many things. But he explain with uh, explain with uh, present level of income. Markowitz has modified by relating the marginal utility of income to changes in the level of present income. Okay. So he converted into the present income. When income increases by small increment, it leads to increase in marginal utility of income. Okay. So when the small increment okay, in income, this is increasing marginal utility of income. By large increase, this is the diminishing marginal utility. Okay. That will, will see in next slide this is why higher level of income people are reluctant to involve or indulge in uh, gambling even at fair risk. on the other hand there are small decrease in income if small decrease in income marginal utility of income rises okay marginal utility of income rises okay if small decrease in income okay but utility of income rises marginal utility but large decrease in income leads to diminishing marginal utility of income. But if large decrease in income, okay, that means large decrease in diminishing marginal utility of income. That is why people insure against small loss. Okay. So, so people insure against small loss, but insert in gambling where losses are involved. <coughs> so here the graph of the Markovic theory. Here is the M and P is the three inflection point on TU. Here is the marginal utility curve. Here is the total utility curve. Here is income measured. Here is the marginal utility measured. Here is the total utility measured. The marginal utility of income curve M is derived in the lower section here. Where present income level OB, OB present level of income OB. With small increase in income, small increase in income here, just N to P, okay, from OB to AC, you can also present here OB to OC, the marginal utility of income increases from S to T, okay, S to T, but large increase in income, okay, but beyond this, okay, Beyond OC, okay, just beyond OC, this leads to diminishing marginal utility of income from point towards T. Here, marginal utility of income increases, it uh, decreases. After this point, if income increases, then marginal utility of income decreases. On the other hand, small decrease in income OB to OA. OB here, present situation, if income is decreases to OA, here, this point to this point, this point, okay, this point. This point to this point income decreases. Okay. Here marginal utility increases S to R. But here income decreases. Okay. This is a concept. So what say? But large decrease in income 
it leads to diminishing marginal utility income from art to art towards O. But one more thing here marginal utility increases, but if again this point to here income decreases, the marginal utility obviously decreases. That's his explanation. Marginal income from R towards R towards marginal utility cut decreases. Markov's hypothesis is an improvement over Friedman Savage's hypothesis. Instead of absolute level of income, he considered the present level of income. It suggests that person behavior to, towards insurance and gambling is same, okay, whether he is poor or rich. So, a person towards uh, insurance is same whether a person is rich or poor, okay. They emphasize on small or large decrease or increase in present income of a person that determines behavior towards insurance and gambling. So, they emphasize on small or large decrease in uh, decrease and increase in present income okay so that will de determine the behavior of insurance and company thank you thanks for watching